it's driving me insane. I gotta f talk about it. Are the Israeli babies evil? Do you hear yourself? Lameo permaban. <laughs> Worse than f***ing animals. No actual human would identify themselves as Israeli. Holy sh! This is what I mean when I say it's really hard to separate out like anti-Zionism from anti-Semitism. Ludwig uploads a video and he makes the itty bittiest, the tiniest little joke about Hassan, and Hassan loses his f***ing mind. I just Oh God, it's just like, what's <laughs> kicks out. Bro, I haven't watched this video. Oh my God, this is actually so f***ing pathetic. Wish assassinations were a real thing. This isn't a quote retweet to two people in this situation. This proves the fact that this tweet had anything to do with Ludwig's Hassan sneak diss video drama. This also proves Ludwig to be an unreliable narrator because he claimed that this tweet was because of the diss in the video and all of the drama about taking down the video, but these are both impossible. Clearly to like watching Destiny. What a dick suck f***ing comment, fuck. One of the funniest things that people always used to say is like, uh, with the with the leftovers breakup, was that I was egging on harassment towards Ethan, and every single day I went live in the beginning, every single day I would spend at least five minutes to thirty minutes talking about how Ethan is not your enemy. I do not like the twinked out whatever the. Short hair, Hassan. I don't like this look. The lack of it. I don't like it. He needs to go back. Or I don't know what he did or what he changed. I don't know what's going on here. Is it new glasses? Whatever change here happened, I don't approve. You should not yell at Ethan. Ethan is a good person. Be more charitable to those who are open and, and susceptible to your opinions. Every single day. I'm still friends with Ethan, by the way. I still talk to Ethan every day. Every single day. Every single day. Throughout the stream. And yet, for many people online, because of the way that you can just craft drama, people legitimately think I was like saying like, fuck Ethan, and that I was egging on harassment. Because the truth does not matter. Do you understand? The truth does not, does not matter. Even amongst people that know each other in the real world. Even if there are two people that are, uh, uh, you know, they have relatively sizable communities. It still doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. But turns out the people in his Discord are fucking crazy. They start frothing at the mouth like the commune, just inform them that they already have they already have too many basket weavers and poets. This is what happens to the first person who tries to defend Ethan. This happens to be right after Hassan makes his statement on stream. Y'all just can't help yourself, Lymphaeo. Ethan is a genocidal Zionist. Ethan is a genocidal Zionist. You are so lost, Lymphaeo. I mean, he is not, but if thinking that makes you feel better by all means, keep slamming your face into the wall, man. Eventually, they'll make it through. He defends the existence of Israel. Okay, I'm not the one defending a fascist. I haven't defended him. So you admit he's a genocidal Zionist? No, yawn. Holy f you are dumb for sure, man. Ethan is a Zionist. You people are so pathetic, not interested in trying to actually improve things. You just want to feel justified in being a hater. By all means, be a hater, but don't think you're any different than a D stan hating on Hassan just because you're in this community. You realize that if you think Ethan is a Zionist, driving a wedge between him and Hassan will guarantee he stays a Zionist. Do you want less Zionists or not? Again, just laying how pathetic you are, okay. Damn, didn't know you knew better than Hassan. You better let him know he's doing everything wrong. You don't need to convince me. I know how awful it is over there. I don't know what they're linking here. Why is there an Ethan sexual in chat? Ethan is a settler now, you're slow, I guess. It is what it is, he lived on stolen land for some time, so make the equation. Oh, remember guys, try not to let um, try not to let the Palestinian flag dipshits on Twitter gaslight you over this. When a lot of these guys say settler or occupied territory, okay? Always keep this in mind. When they say settler, when they say occupied territory and when they say stolen land, they're not talking about the Gaza Strip and they're not talking about the West Bank. They're talking about all of Israel. They're talking about the... So when they say that Ethan lived on stolen land, they don't mean he lived in the West Bank or the Gaza Strip. They mean any part of Israel. Tel Aviv is stolen land. They mean every part of Israel is stolen land. Don't forget that. Don't... Yeah. I know. Did he personally kick a Palestinian out of their home? All right, time's up, permaban. Damn, permaban. Look at Hassan's community defending Ethan. Good job. 
fucking monkey doesn't know what a settler is. Ban. Go chase your Zionist buddy, you fucking lib. Like, these people think there's a debate to be had, lol. No. People in quotes. Ooh, dehumanizing language. The stages of genocide. Isn't dehumanizing language one of the stages? Is there an Ethan sexual genocide happening right now in Hassan's demented discord? Hmm. Then Ethan makes his comments on stream after this. Uh-oh. Video. And my first reaction is that, um, don't say rest in power. That's, that's not for him. I see the, le the leftist dialogue about this has been absolutely bananas. Um, is Ethan having a leftist arc? Oh, no. Oh, no. My first reaction is this. It was absolutely insane how he, like, stood the whole time. That was crazy. I didn't know how that's all humanly possible. Again, not to put this uncouth, but he's a champ at fucking burning a I mean, that sounds bad, but he did it really good. Does that bad sound bad? We have to make levity of things. Does that sound bad that he was really good? I mean, but I mean that, a, I mean that as, a, as a compliment. What the fuck are you guys angry about, you weirdos? I'm li what did I do? My God, stop. They're just saying, all I hear is Ethan, no, but I don't understand what I've even said. Ethan turning back into a line of Zion. Oh, chewing? Yeah, I'll stop that. Maybe they just mean, maybe they're just talking about the chewing. Could that be? Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> Wait, what did I even say that to mean? Like, give me a fucking break. Holy shit. Isn't that I do it because he wanted people to talk about it? Like, sh like, that's what I'm doing. My point is this. First of all, I was st uh, stunned by the way that he stood through the whole thing. I mean, shit, that was wild. Um, and really showed his result, his true resolve to, to protest in that way. I can only imagine this. Just a horrific way to die, so pretty wild. That being said, <clears throat> I do not believe that it is good for people to be um, romanticizing or encouraging. I know it's not, I know people aren't doing that, but like the way people are romanticizing it is kind of fucked up, in my opinion. The man, he killed himself, and I don't think we should ever talk about that issue with any kind of uh, reverence, because let's be real. What was Aaron's relation to Palestine? He, I don't, what do you mean? He had like the strongest relationship with Palestine you could possibly have. He was 25 years old and white in America. The amount of people online who are talking about it in this like wonderful, uh, almost like, I don't know describe it. People are, um, I'm trying to where I put it. People are idolizing him. You are going to, more people are going to kill themselves. I mean, that's just a matter of fact. It's just, there's just more people going to kill themselves. I don't think suicide's funny. I don't think it's anything that we should encourage. I think it's pretty much always bad. And while I can appreciate, he's. Really? <laughs> And he, and he reveals the inner Nazi. Suicide is always bad. What about when Hitler killed himself? Checkmate. Dedication, I mean, to put it mildly, you know, uh, if I, I can appreciate his dedication um, and his conviction, right? I mean, for not, like, uh, unbelievable. Self-immolation is literally suicide. He killed himself. Sorry, I don't know what that, that's another weird dialogue. They go, no, no, no. Everybody goes, yeah, we agree, suicide's bad, get help. But then they go, unless you're doing it for a good cause, then you can kill yourself. Like, no. <laughs> This is not a fucking, this is not something to romanticize ever. Sorry. You should 100% do more research on self immolation as protests. Yeah, you know who does self immolation? Fucking, um, people who are like under tyrannical rule who have literally no way for their voices to be heard other than that. Damn. Wow. What a great, what a great take, huh? Interesting. <laughs> hmm. Like, I'm sorry. Suicide bad. I don't think we should romanticize it. I haven't seen anyone romanticizing. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you been online? Everybody's glamorizing it. Oh my God, how can you even disagree with me on that? That's crazy. Like the amount of people online who are like, <coughs> he's a fuck, he's a, I understand why people want to go like, he's a hero. Like I understand that because he made this ultimate sacrifice in the most gruesome way possible, right? And so I understand the impulse of being like, I don't want that to, I want to honor that sacrifice. Monks do self-immolation. Yeah, I know. When they're like under tyrannical oppression by the Chinese and have literally no way for the voices to be heard. But I mean, the Palestinian cause is for sure uh, plenty talked about. Wow. And then there's a part two, but hold on. Quick your rage break. Part two. Illness can be present and moral goodness can also be present at the same time. And I think that that's just like, I don't understand when people say it, it's, it wasn't suicide just because I don't understand the logistics surrounding like the definition of it. It's because you're right. It is because they're carving out a moral uh, uh, barrier for themselves to say, oh yeah, well in this case, killing yourself is, t is great. But it's not, that's because it's not suicide. It is, it is. He killed himself. He has family, he has friends, presumably. He has people that are gonna be affected by him leaving the planet in that way. It's suicide, it literally is suicide. He was a service member, well then, did he have any miss, did he have any uh, delusion about what the United States military was? The ones that like killed a million Iraqis like a decade before, why did he join? I think he was mentally ill. I Fuck, that's a bullshit talking point, Ethan. Don't repeat that talking point ever, it is completely not true. 
think what you said is right, Olivia. I think he did. I think he did something that, in his mind, didn't hurt anybody, and he made the ultimate sacrifice for what he thought was a was a. Do you have more Palestinians have planned or is Finkelstein debate the last one? Um, the Piers Morgan show. I might fly out there in a week or two. I don't know if they want to do something with me. Um, the Booker was talking about it, but no, I don't have anything formal planned. I'll probably do a few more debates because I have so much knowledge on it now. But I don't know how much more. A righteous cause of paramount importance. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I think people need to be absolutely careful with how they fucking put him on a pedestal because you're gonna end because more people are gonna kill themselves. And I don't think suicide should ever be glamorized. Even when a monk does it, and it's like, wow, it should be more like, dude, that's fucking crazy. Um, and it's horrible also. It's absolutely mental health. Then why is it never, okay, people go, it's not a mental health issue. Then why the fuck are there tons of other people doing it? I'm sorry, you don't set yourself on fire. If he, he's a martyr, Jesus Christ. <laughs> a martyr? Some of y'all are lost, I don't have to say. Some of y'all like sometimes wonders if like, I don't know, man. Chat is so fucking weird, I agree. People under tyrannical, so Palestinians. No, but there are people whose voices can't be heard. Also, the dude's not even Palestinian. If he was, you know what I mean? Like, nobody in Palestine is, like, going to the fucking barbed wire fence of the wall and setting themselves on fire. <laughs> well, the Great March of Return had people going to the barbed wire fence and trying to set Israel on fire. It's kind of close. If someone did that, I'd probably, it'd probably be like, like, wow, that's... Oh, that was another ICJ thing um, that was in that South African case where they... Um, where they brought up the, uh, they, the only thing South Africa mentions about that March of Return is they say it was a large scale peaceful protest along the separation fence between Gaza and Israel in which thousands of Palestinians participated every Friday for over 18 months. But the funny thing is you can look at the actual UN statements about what was going on and even in the UN. They bring up like all the violence that happened on the, uh, on the border wall. While the vast majority of protesters have acted in a peaceful manner, during most protests, dozens have approached the fence attempting to damage it, burning tires, throwing stones and Molotov cocktails towards Israeli forces and flying incendiary kites and balloons into Israeli territory. The latter resulted in extensive damage to agricultural land and nature reserves inside Israel and risked the lives of Israeli civilians. Some instances of shooting and throwing of explosive devices have also been reported. Jesus. But anyway, mostly peaceful. Like that, that would hit me maybe harder. Again, not to trivialize it. However, you're, you have to be mentally ill to set yourself on fire. Especially... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then why aren't, then why aren't people going and doing it? <laughs> There's a billion people talking about Twitter, so why isn't there a whole fucking um, Congo, Congo line of people self-immolating outside of the Israeli consulate? Do you know what I'm saying? Ooh. We, I, I'm someone that takes mental health seriously, and I want, that's, that's part of one of my things. So like when I see people like romanticizing suicide and saying, oh, it's not mental health, it is absolutely mental health. You think of one of the... Let me think. I thought about it this way. <laughs> if one of the guards was able to stop him before he lit the fire, do you think that in 10, in ten years' time, he would have looked back and been like, man, I wish that I... My regret is that I didn't set myself on fire. Or would he be like, you know what, that guard, I understand what, what, I, was, what I was trying to do, and, that was, and it was a righteous thing, but I'm happy I'm fucking alive and that guard stopped me. Like, like wh which do you think he would be thinking in 10 years? More likely. That he wished he died in a fire uh, at a moment of crisis in his life, even if it was for a good cause, or that he's like, I'm so fucking happy I'm alive right now, and that somebody saved my life. Saved my life, quote unquote, whatever. Although I will say this, the video was insane. I cannot fucking believe the police. Are there. It's like, you can't... I can't ever stop being so ridiculous. A cop came up to his charred fucking corpse and pulled a gun on him. Did you guys see that? Insane. I was like, what are you doing, dude? He's sitting there with a gun pointed at this man's charred corpse. It's still on fire. Yeah, like a devastating <laughs> metaphor. I was like, what the f*** is wrong with you? God damn. You're mentally ill, Ethan. You should answer why you're not self-immolating. That is like, something I'm, I need to uh, think about. <laughs> Egg whites. Can you try that? Sounds good as shit. Tomorrow. Don't you have to say place? Oh, that place. Do you have a take about the cop with a gun pointed? He apparently claimed he was doing just in case protect the people putting him. I don't know. That was weird. But also, I'm not going to judge too harshly. I don't know how many times you're confronted in your life with a guy literally setting himself on fire. <laughs> like, who knows? It's not like that wild to think that the guy might run and try to like grab somebody else and set them on fire. Like, yeah, not everybody is confronted with a person, a person running around self-immolating every day. Fuckers. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I have this issue too when people go, someone like kills their whole family and their kids just the most horrific thing and then they go on trial and they go uh we're pleading insanity it's like oh uh, yeah no shit you don't f kill your whole family if you're like perfectly sane of mind <laughs> it's not a normal thing to do to kill somebody let alone you know some of the horrific crimes especially it drives me crazy when like a 16 year old does a horrific crime and they get charged for adult it's like why do we have the charges an adult why do we have that rule if every time a 15 16 year old or even younger fucking 13 year olds do a horrific crime we try them as an adult they're not an adult that's the whole point of the fucking that's the whole point of the law you know But I think, you know, in the grand scheme, yeah, I don't know. I just think I'm a little put off by how people um, romance. 
What is your response to the 100 murdered at the Israeli aid trucks? Uh, I'd have to look into it, but just on a cursory glance of things, it sounds like what happened was there were aid trucks. It sounds like there were a ton of people that stampeded on the way there and a bunch of them died. It sounds like a bunch of people are blaming and saying the IDF was like indiscriminately shooting into crowds of people trying to murder as many Palestinians as possible. <laughs> That's That was my cursory glance takeaway. Maybe there's something different or something happened, but I don't know. It seems stupid to me, but... One point two thousand comments. Man, Ethan, I love you, but you were super disrespectful about Bushnell. It seems you now only talk about the genocide when it's to shit on or question pro-Palestinian activities. The death toll has passed over thirty k, and it was radio silence on that with peace and love. Hundreds of bloodlines and thousands and thousands of children gone. The flower massacre just happened, and you did not say a single. The flower massacre is that what we're calling it now? Um, no, it's not your responsibility to talk about it. And of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. But every time you do bring it up, you end up saying some very disrespectful things in poor taste to say during a genocide, even if your overall point is to mean well. For perspective, try to imagine this during other historical events, such as the monks during the Vietnam protests. Why do people keep making this stupid f***ing comparison? Why don't you ever refute the descendant of Cuban slave owner's comment? I thought that they were obviously based, but people on Twitter get themselves so convinced based on your mom's wonder. Because I don't, I don't know what the descendants of my family from 200 years ago are. I don't even know my mom. You know, slavery was outlawed in Cuba in like the 1800s. <laughs> like they're convinced that like my mom and her dad were like slave owners. I don't, can't, I can't prove or disprove that. I have no fucking idea. Um, but it's also, it's also just a racist joke. Like I don't. First of all, my mom came to New York. Uh, they immigrated to New York when she was like five years old. Uh, my family didn't come from a ton of wealth or money. Although I guess they would say that that was all confiscated from them from Cuba's glorious revolution also i'm pretty sure my parents came over at a time my, my parents and their parents came over at a time when a ton of middle class wealth was fleeing uh cuba but the thing is they'll say every single person that had any amount of wealth in cuba was a slave owner i guess since they all owned slaves um it's just not it's not even worth talking about <clears throat> also most of these people probably grew up more privileged than i did because i guarantee you these people got free education and shit paid for by their parents and everything too come also, that one girl on Twitter that makes fun of me uh, or says that my parents were slave owners is a Somali, meaning her ancestors probably sold my parents the slaves that they used. I used to say Ethan had good intentions, but honestly, what good intentions? What do good intentions even mean when you talk like this about a dead man? Laughing and mocking, self-immolation, holy shit. I'm sorry, but this is psychopathic. Afterwards, Ethan unleashes his Jewish fury on the unsuspecting innocent Palestinian children in his chat. Why, do, why is the summary written like this? Sorry, the guy that wrote this for me is... Call Ethan a Zionist and a racist and a f***ing genocidal freak. You can run in the pastures with your friends. Ethan's, Ethan's genocidal. Hold hands and skip in the daisies. Smell the beautiful air of Ethan being a genocidal Zionist. And then when you're done, you can handle my circumcised tiny Jewish cock delicately into your mouth <laughs> like a miniature um what do you call those kosher hot dogs that everyone loves hebrew national like a like a little hebrew national appetizer plate with a toothpick in it that's what my dick is and you're gonna delicately put it in your mouth and you're gonna like why didn't she have some recent dramas here Hold on. Why are people mad at me? I want someone please to explain it. Explain why you're mad at me. Go ahead. I, I'm dying. Please. Are people mad? They're mad about my comments about Aaron Bushnell on the scene next Tuesday. I, my point was this. I think you should be careful about how you romanticize suicide because it's going to encourage more people to do it. That was my take. And um, that apparently enraged people. Unless I'm misunderstanding, tell me why. I'd love to know why. Because I feel like when people are angry at me, they're looking for, uh, regarding this kind of stuff, they're looking for any reason. And so I feel like if you actually articulated why you were mad at me, it wouldn't make any sense. So I'm dying. Please write it. What I Because <clears throat> you made fun of him burning. Okay, dummy. I joke about all this shit every day. And now all of a sudden you got to get, get all bitched out. Like, give me a break, dude. I wasn't even insulting him. I said... I was, it, it was, the joke was that it was distasteful and I was complimenting his resolve, frankly. And the joke was that it was, it was a compliment in a really distasteful way. That's my f humor. I do it here every day.
And for I mean, it's especially on the members, <coughs> which is a little more <coughs> well, unfiltered, gone wild. Un unfiltered by design. It's just kind of like Ethan is there. And no, I would listen. I would say that joke on the podcast. Sure. And I joke but about, I, but if, especially on the members, you just kind of like shoot the shit. Say yeah, whatever, absolutely. But I, I, it's just it's really annoying that like people just they stand by it, like just waiting for any reason to call me. And by the way, call me a Zionist. Make it about how I support genocide, about all this horrible fucking shit to call me racist. Why? Because I made one stupid, um, insensitive joke that, by the way, didn't call his character into question. It literally was just like, he's really, he was really good. And he was, my point was. You should call his character into question, by the way. That guy that burned himself alive was a fucking piece of shit. So, I mean, like, he was a bad person too. Like, or at least he had bad political beliefs. Resolve was, was crazy. And the thing that, you know, um, really struck me. Ethan calls out Frogan and addresses the hate. Oh, no. That's the problem. You know what I mean? So extreme. <clears throat> Not a bad person, just mentally ill. Well, they also posted some... Well, unless maybe they didn't mean anything they said on... Um, I've seen people post a lot of excerpts. I guess I should fact check. Maybe people are making all this up. But I've seen it posted by a lot of different people. America isn't defending Ukraine. If by Ukraine you mean the Ukrainian people. America is competing with Russia for control of the Ukrainian state. They aren't giving weapons to Ukrainian people. Why would they do that? They're giving weapons to the Ukrainian state. Hey, so I'm not a Palestinian and I'm in no position to endorse or condemn Hamas' actions. That being said, neither are most people, and there are a lot of very confidently ignorant opinions being thrown around. There are no Israeli civilians or tourists who have no part in the oppression of Palestine. That idea doesn't make sense, doesn't make any sense, it betrays a lack of understanding of what the oppression of Palestine even is. Israel is a settler, colonialist, apartheid state. All of its residents or their immediate forebearers have moved there specifically to settle on stolen land. Land those people are being cornered and cleansed just a few miles away, or right next to our the case of the West Bank. There are no Israelis without the genocide of the Palestinian people. To bring this into stark relief, there is the example of the music festival, which the liberal states and media have made such a point of clutching their pearls over. A music festival? How could it get more innocent than a music festival? That music festival was happening just three miles from Gaza, within sight of the border wall. Imagine a similar event happening in the early days of the colonization of North America. Can you or I really say that indigenous people are wrong for retaliating against colonizers who are rubbing their domination of their face? Whiteness erases culture. It really pisses me off because I never said a damn bad thing about that guy. And that's why I says when you need to explain your reason for calling me a racist, calling me a genocidal, a Zionist, which, by the way, Zionist is just another slur for Jew, being a Jew. You know how many people now calling every Jew is a Zionist? Okay, just call me a Jew and get it over with. Call me the K-word, at least I'll know what you mean. It's just the truth. Not everybody, not all the time. But a lot of times, let's not fucking pretend that anti-Semitism isn't a fucking massive inferno of acceptable behavior right now on the left and the right. Nazis and leftists are dabbing the fuck up saying fuck Zionists. You know, and, you know, <clears throat> again, not to, I got to, it's driving me insane. I got to talk about it. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like there's just not a tidal wave of anti-Semitism gobbling up the entire discourse. It's disgusting, man. And I'm, I'm doing, as, as an Israeli dual citizen, as someone who's deeply invested in the state of Israel, who's probably <clears throat> more sympathetic to the Israeli perspective than most people would be, I've tried so hard to pull myself to some kind of central ground where we can have a real conversation about this stuff. I, I'm pulled myself all the way to, you know, outright saying that it's apartheid, that it's genocide, that the Israeli government is, is committing. And so, but you still want to call me a racist and a genocide and a Zionist. Why would you call me a Zionist if it wasn't just, oh, you're a fucking Jew? When I have said all the things that you want to hear from me. I want oh, to no. Okay. Ethan calls out Frogan. Wait, was this already part of what we were listening to? That's the problem. You know what I mean? So extreme. Okay. It really pisses me off because I never said a damn bad thing about that guy. And that's why he says, when you need me a break who's the problem scumbag scumbag and I, you know what i don't want to call out this because i'm gonna say this because it pissed me the f off and being an anti-semite openly and proudly is now likes on twitter rogan she tweeted out she goes my zion i have a problem with my uh with my zionist therapist I just call him a f jew i'm sorry but that you can't talk like that about any other f minority i had a problem with my zionist therapist would you talk your zionist therapist did you get that, those level of details from them? You, you, you had an in-depth conversation about the politics of Zionism with your therapist? No, I know what you mean. You mean fucking Jew. True. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be, let my fucking people, you know, be openly bigoted and racist. Fuck that shit. Nobody would expect that from any other minority. Nobody. It's disgusting. It is. And I'm here. I'm with you. I'm on your side all the fucking way. I'm on your side as much as I possibly can be. And instead of, you know, holding hands and having a real conversation, you spit in my face and you call me a Zionist. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. People get angry about what I said. That pisses me off. It's just, it's f absurd. Think about poor um, <coughs> Shetty. We've been making... 
Liberals want to protect their internalized anti-Semitism towards Jewish people onto me when I have more than two brain cells to know that being Jewish doesn't mean you're a Zionist. <clears throat> when I say my therapist was a Zionist when I went to her back in 2019, I mean she literally brought up that I was Lebanese unprompted and confronted me on it, saying she was Israeli. She asked if I had a problem with that, if I felt like Israel had the right to exist, and started asking more and more if I was frustrated with Islam, and I considered taking off my hijab. I asked her if she was all right with me being Lebanese, and she got really aggressive, accusing me of flipping it on her and refused to answer. So when I say Zionist, I don't mean she was Jewish. I mean she was a racist Israeli who could not help herself but to confront me about my ethnicity in what was supposed to be a therapy session. This is her like original take of this, by the way. I just went to therapy for the, this is five years ago, four years ago. I just went to therapy for the first time and after talking about my dad fleeing the Israeli-Lebanon war, she was like, I'm Israeli. Do you have any issues with me being your therapist? Bruh, I was so taken aback. <laughs> Frogan is constantly propped up by Twitch streamers and Twitch itself when she only averages 100 concurrent viewers. It just feels like one of those situations where they say it's diversity, but it just feels like nepotism all over again because some woman on the Twitch council really likes Frogan personally, almost for sure. Like, this is disgusting. Exciting news! Twitch has chosen me to be featured as a legendary woman on the front page, together for legendary woman, um, together for legendary women front page carousel, not just for March, but for the entire year. Frogan on October 7th. Leftists preach and foam at the mouth at the thought of a revolution happening in America, but as soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. <laughs> when shaming the guy doesn't work, shame his friends. These messages to AB are genuinely so f***ed up. AB and Lena are two of the best people I know. You're a straight sellout. You don't even deserve your Arabic name. <laughs> Abdullah and Lena Ayad, the human doormats. Your families must be proud. The Zionists must be paying you well, Ab. I wonder what they mean by Zionist. No such thing as a good Israeli. F all of them. I've seen Israelis go to prison because they refuse to join the IDF, though. LOL. Nazi or brain dead. Israel is literally a colony. They're colonizers. What's wrong with you? Like, in order for there to be a colony or a settlement, there has to be colonizers and settlers to occupy it. The fuck? Israel deserves deconstruction. Are the Israeli babies evil? Do you hear yourself? Lameo permaban. <laughs> Damn. Reason, go f*** yourself. Base, destiny bans. Worse than f***ing animals. No actual human would identify themselves as Israeli. Holy shit. Are you okay over here? Of course he believes that it's valid when POC do it. Nasty f***ing little Zionist thug. I need China to do shock and awe on the Israelis. You could pick up a speech or read a letter from Nazi Germany and immediately picture an Israeli speaking. You know, after rummaging through media from World War II, when finishing the zone of interest, it's insane how similar Israelis are. Insane. Like, not even just partially. I don't know, I'm not Ethan's fan, but I like the leftovers. If Ethan's only bad take on Aaron's sacrifice was that he's mentally ill, then this isn't half as bad as people make, as people making fun of the man for doing so as people portray. Please grow up. The last part is bad, I agree, but again, he's not making fun, even if we believe the tweet word for word. <laughs> Permaban. <laughs> Imagine having friends with different outlooks on life. Nah, I love my hug box, even though I have no friends in real life. You'd have friends who support genocide? That's what we're talking about. This isn't about regular deferring views. This is genocide. Wow, imagine being in a hug box protesting the Holocaust, you f***ing tankies. Permaban. <laughs> Damn. Israel is the worst thing ever to happen to Palestinians and the second worst thing ever to happen to Jews. Jesus. Hassan doesn't want shit from Discord. Caseytron breaks rule two against the worst drama farming psycho with a community that watches this place closer than the mods do. Hoscore, let's all double down on the ra on this rather than dealing with it. Hassan will really appreciate the blowback from this, given he's the only one who will need to deal with this. Who will need to deal this? It would deal with this. I think he meant to say this place can't help itself. Perma ban. Oh no, wait, seven day ban. Just today, we ha this is what I mean when I say it's really hard to separate out like anti-Zionism from anti-Semitism. <laughs> 
Just today, we have a horrific example of a man ran over by tanks in Gaza till he had no recognizable features with only an arm that was zip tied compared to filthy settlers like Ethan evoking China because they were brainwashed by a screen grab of a video where the man was moved aside. <laughs> filthy settlers like Ethan. Damn. Free speech is a mistake. It shouldn't exist. And people like Ethan shouldn't be allowed to have public voice. For the good of society, some people should be kept in basements. Israelis are some of the most disgusting humans I've ever seen. How the f*** do you take women's lingerie and put them on your f***ing cars driving through shooting people? How do you tie up people and then run them over the tank for fun? For fun? What is, um, is Ethan even is, didn't Ethan just live in Israel for a little bit? He wasn't born there. Did, isn't he an American? Or am I wrong on that? He has dual citizenship? Oh, okay. What is the hardest job on earth? If you ask me, I'd say being a Marine. Okay, no, no, actually one addendum, being a pregnant Marine. Okay, one more addendum, being a YouTuber when you have to re-upload it, being a pregnant YouTuber when you have to re-up up. <sighs> we'll do, okay, we'll do this drama next. Hold on, I gotta, I need to eat. Didn't say a bad thing about the guy. It just feels Ethan Klein like needs to stop talking about Israel Palestine. So apparently, so my plan was about a week ago. No, never, not even. It was like four days ago. <clears throat> Ludwig uploads a video, and he makes the itty bittiest, the tiniest little joke about Hassan, and Hassan loses his f***ing mind. And the phrasing was bad. Shouldn't have said sucks the soul. So my plan was re-upload. Wait. Because for the most part, my video, again, was about the Twitch shutdown in Korea. I used Oh, no, wait. This isn't even the original video. Fuck. <clears throat> what asshole, is the hardest sir? job on earth? If you ask me, I'd say being a Marine. Okay, no, no, actually, one addendum. Being a pregnant Marine. But the answer might be a lot simpler than that. Many online think the answer might be being a streamer. <laughs> This, this is this is real. This has been a conversation point on Twitter. We're going to talk about it today. Real quick, by the way, I'm so f***ing mad at X.com. I went online today, and I just saw somebody die in a car wreck. I had to follow Lois Poyos TV because he posted that shit. I was like, dude, why are you making me look at this? <laughs> what? He's like, it's like a nuclear fucking reaction. It's like slowly spreading through his brain <laughs> he like can't fucking believe did this guy just step out of line he's so fucking mad and then if i don't look at that i scroll the website for five minutes and i see the same fucking mr beast video for the 800th time in a row i like the videos mr beast i'm just sick of seeing it. why is it always getting promoted to me god damn i hate opening that fucking app but i keep opening the damn app i don't know why i keep opening it diatride aside we are talking today about streamers and how it might be a difficult job possibly the hardest on earth why are we talking about this because this is what people i don't know what people would do with their fucking days nowadays i don't know this is what some people do with their days and it all started because of a clip from hassan piker uh which which uh i will just play out of context and we'll get the context in a bit right now yes a real job can be gruesome a real job can make you very tired but a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you you know what i mean in the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Now, as you can imagine, this clip went mega viral. The viral to the effect of 10 million views. And in my five-year uh, career as a YouTuber, I've never made a video with that many views before. So that it, it is an impressive number in my mind. And it has led to a lot of hate, of course. A lot of a conversation, maybe, is not the best word to use for it. And, of course, memes. A real job doesn't suck the soul out of you in the same way streaming absolutely will. Stay strong, Hassan. At least our souls aren't being sucked. Thank God I am not a streamer. And it is pe people putting down bricks. Because that, it, look, it hits a little harder than if you put what most people's jobs are which is like sitting at a desk that wouldn't hit as hard but you know i get the meme i get the meme uh and 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 that's and that's where the conversation stems from and i think most people have an issue with the exact phrase of a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you because i think most people would disagree with that i think it does suck the soul out of you but asan actually was talking about something a little different which he articulated in the full context clip about social battery nine hours of of constant performance and people pleasing Paps you out from social scenarios. After nine hours of that, I could probably do fucking physical labor. It would not bother me. But I can't fucking do more social shit. That's my point. And this clip wasn't parroted alone by Hassan. Uh, uh, it was also Asmund Gold who, who agreed with Hassan and said this. You really think that's not true? 
I mean, you really think it's not true that after you spend nine hours being investigated by thousands of people with every facial movement, everything you say, every word, with people constantly trying to disagree with you and fight with you, that's not emotionally or sorry, like socially draining. And I get the point being made here, and I feel like it's somewhat validated by the fact that this clip went so viral in the 15 seconds of Hassan's nine-hour stream has basically led to two days of him trending on Twitter, at least every time I go on the damn website. Uh, but he seems to be taking it in decent spirits, because in reply to this video, what's harder than this? He said Twitch streaming, <laughs> which, which, okay, funny meme. But I wanted to talk about this. As a streamer myself for almost six years now on how hard it really is. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I would look. I, I just. Oh God! It's just like what's funny is you haven't even addressed this again since then. I know it's just an opportunity for every single person to be like, "Look, guys, I'm a content creator. I'm really privileged. Like, yeah, dog. We all we all are. We all talk about it all the fucking time. It just annoys me because like it's such a fake fucking thing to do. It's just literally using someone who you're friends with like being maliciously clipped out of context to be like, I'm actually one of the good content creators. I know how privileged I am. It's like, yeah, I do too. That's so fucking dumb. Oh my God. Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's like no different than what Muda did. You show the context though. It doesn't fucking matter that he showed the context. It's just a way to just literally farm off the fucking drama. Eh, whatever. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? It's just... I don't give a shit about this conversation. Frankly, yeah, no, I, no video for Nick Marks from Ludwig, uh, you know, because... Eh. I think it's dumb, okay? <laughs> because I understand that I'm in a very fortunate position. And I'm in a fortunate position that I don't want to lose. So I work really hard to not lose it. But I don't give a fuck about telling you how hard I work. I just, I just do that because I want to make sure the 30 employees I have still have jobs and that I don't get beaten out by the people who are a lot younger and funnier and more in touch than I am. Because, man, motherfucker, I'm getting old. People tell me every goddamn day. I like the spot I'm in. But I understand there's a lot of people who just outright fucking hate me or, or maybe an Asmin or a Hassan or whoever. Because you can't we even are finish streamers, the video. Which, looking from the outside, we are people who make money by playing video games or watching videos or just talking about stuff. That's a whole lot better of a career in an upwards trajectory path than most jobs. And most jobs in America are like retail, cashier, places without as much upward mobility, places. Abba and Preacher also covered this in city from a family that's at the top 0.1% in Turkey because that's relevant. First of all, I'm not. So they're just fucking, once again, lying because they saw. <clears throat> Abba and Preacher also covered this and said you are from a family that is at the top 0.1% in Turkey because that's relevant for some reason. What do you mean you're not? How many people in Turkey go to private schools, ride horses? as children and like move to America and go to Rutgers. Uh, like it wouldn't surprise me if he was a top 0.1 percenter. His family was given like his dad and his mom's position in the world too. They probably are at least top 1 percent, probably top 0.1 percent, I think. But who knows? Maybe Turkey is actually an unbelievably unfathomably wealthy place where everybody's just fucking loaded all the time. Who knows? 0.1 percent in Turkey because that's relevant. First of all, I'm not. So they're just fucking, once again, lying because they saw it on Twitter because it doesn't fucking matter because no matter how much I like offer context, it literally doesn't matter. He's just straight up fucking lying. This is literally what you said. He's just saying the same thing you did. I know. At this point, it's just like, it literally doesn't matter. How many death threats do you think Lug gets for playing video games? Like, what the fuck? How can you compare playing games to what you do on stream and these people have to deal with it all? <sighs> How can you compare playing video games to what you do on stream? <clears throat> it's like, it's odd that I have to just like sit here and be like, yeah, that's right, dude. Yeah, wag your fucking finger at me. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, you're right. A, a communist, hypocrite, fucking... Uh, ay, ay, ay. This bums me out more honestly than than random dumb fucks uh, online that are just saying a whole bunch of shit about my family or whatever. You know what I mean? I said this already. The shit from the shit from Twitter doesn't do anything. It's not real. It's like mostly fucking bot farmed into oblivion, and it's like a right wing shithole. But it's when content creators who are liberal or have like a larger broader. I also like how Ludwig is like a liberal content creator. A guy who talks about Super Smash and does like podcasts or whatever is like. Also, like a political liberal content creator, like what? Like an audience of real people, when they frame it in the same way that they see it off of Twitter, that is fucking that. That actually does lead to real world shit. Never believe the magic until I saw my dog turn to a snake. 
where it doesn't feel like you have a path for 20, 30 years down the line. Places where it's really fucking hard to like juggle your job and then also saving up to buy a house and settle down, which is feeling like a more and more daunting task for most Americans. So I get it. If you fucking hate me, no problem. But let's ignore the top 1% of 1% because that's what we are, frankly. And let's talk about something a little more interesting. We don't have to fucking feed into this dumbass conversation. Sure, streamers suck. Who gives a fuck? Ignore everything I've been saying in this video. It is me, Ludwig from the past, and I can assure Fucking slap. I got video. used like a fucking cum rag for a rocket mortgage uh, ad, dude. Come on. But there are a lot more streamers out there who do have it rough. And once you reach the 2,000th biggest streamer in the world, which is very impressive to do, 2,000, imagine you're the 2,000th best computer program in the world. You'd be damn fucking good at your job. They make a whole lot less money. Now you might look at this and be like, look, they're making $100,000. This is split over two years. So they're making $50,000 a year. Now these numbers are a bit outdated. It comes from the Twitch leaks. But bear in mind, those Twitch leaks came from when Twitch was a bigger website. So arguably the 2,000th biggest streamer, especially with the reduction in how much you make per sub, is making less than they were two years ago. It's about $50,000 a year, okay? $50,000 a year. Now again, you do get to make your own hours. You do get to play whatever you want, but, but that is the reality, okay? And I'm not trying to fucking woe is me for somebody making 50K playing video games, but it does get even worse for some streamers. Specifically today, it got a whole lot worse for a lot of streamers because they woke up and the website that they used to stream on, that they built their career on, that they made their community in is gone. And that's what I actually want to talk about here today, which is the Twitch shutdown in Korea. That's so whack. Oh my God. No, no, that shutdown officially happens literally right now, February 27th Korea time. It's February 26th America time. And that's, that's how time zones work. It is officially shut down. Why? Peace. Dude, come on, bro. Don't fucking farm me like that. Jesus Christ. That's lame as fuck, actually. Well, Hassan is arguably a self-made person. He's very good at networking. Like, yes, he had an uncle that gave him opportunities most people won't have. Hassan still crazy, put in the hours. <clears throat> I think we just disagree about what self-made means, but... And then, <clears throat> so I think after this, I think I go out of town. I think Ludwig ends up taking this video down. I'm pretty sure Ludwig lies. Ludwig lies and he says that the sponsor didn't like it or something. But I'm pretty sure it was because Hassan cried about the thing, uh, the insult that was in there. Ludwig ends up uploading a completely different video. What is the hardest job on earth? If you ask me, I'd say being a Marine. Okay. And then in this new video that he uploads, apparently he's like super soft on Hassan and gets rid of any bad jokes about him. Likes. And so what I ended up using as a clickbait to talk about that video was a topic that has been trending on Twitter for like four days now. Uh, which, of course, is about streaming perhaps being a hard job. Harder than a real job, some people are saying. Where did this conversation start from? It seems like a silly thing to talk about. Well, it started from this clip on Hassan's channel. We'll watch it together here. A real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. And that soundbite has gone a bit viral. Wait, this is the second iteration of the re-upload. The first was six minutes long. Oh, wait, was there another iteration first? Lud changed the thumbnail first. We're taking the video down. Going through a lot of places. Now, let's give the full context of what he's saying there. Because at the surface level, that sentence, a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you, is wrong. It's just flat out wrong. And I think Hassan on stream would probably say that, yeah, that was not the best wording. I should not have said that. What he was trying to talk about was this. There are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons. Service sector, people-pleasing jobs would be very similar. Those are like good comparisons for a job that might drain your social battery for context. Like I think customer service type shit. But like if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited, way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what that's what like sucks your, your social battery and you just tap out after it. And the term social battery is probably a lot more acceptable to most people than the term soul. People don't like the term soul because a soul sucking job to most people would be like a job that doesn't have upwards mobility, which again, I think Hassan would agree with. And I personally agree with because I worked at Apple support for two and a half fucking years, like literally helping boomers reset their Apple password. And in the final six months, and I think part of it is because my girlfriend at the time cheated on me. So I was going through it. I would throw my headset at the wall because I couldn't handle a sweet 70 year old lady trying to figure out how to reset her password. I just couldn't handle that social interaction, which, which, which is bad of me. Uh, and the closest I've ever come to that is babysitting my chat. Uh, but people don't really give a shit about the context. People don't really give a shit about the conversation. They just care about getting Twitter likes, which is all this really is, which is why people like fucking Keemstar are tweeting out shit like this, just, you know, just for a dunk sesh. Because nobody gives a fucking shit. Nobody gives a rat's ass about the facts or about any people involved. Oh, no, they just no, care thanks about for resubbing. Little Twitter like little impression, right? That's why they tweet. Dump, what is this? Look at this shit they tweet, bro. Why do they all look like Twitch streamers? They don't. What, what are we doing here? But again, that's not the point. And just for some more clarity, I'm pretty sure Hassan also understands that workers have it rough and generally tries to voice for workers to have it better. And is actually one of the people that inspired me to make Offbrand, my company that I own, hello, I'm the owner of Offbrand and I have 30 employees, uh, and turn it into a workers co-op, a place that generally treats workers better. And so one of my biggest goals this past year that we just announced last week is that we're making Offbrand uh, workers co-op. And so the people who work here 
will just own the company and they will have votes equal to even the board of directors on the big decisions, who runs a company, what we do, what we use the surplus for. And that's part of the co-op is like, hey, here's how much we made. Here's how much stuff costs. Here's our so anyway, that, that was, yeah, in part inspired by Son. I talked to him about doing that because I want to make sure the people who work at my company have a good-ass <laughs> fucking time. They're a fucking killer-ass company who kicks ass. Bro, I haven't watched this video. Oh my god, this is actually so fucking pathetic. I, are you serious? He actually bent the knee this fucking hard? What a weird fucking walk back on everything. The ass takes names and makes a hell of a lot of money. All right? I don't think that 15-second clip is indicative of all of his thoughts and opinions. But again, the phrasing was bad. Shouldn't have said sucks the soul. So my plan was re-upload, because for the most part, my video, again, was about the Twitch shutdown in Korea. I use a little bit of clickbait just to get you in there. I take out the ad, we're all hunky-dory. But then I fucking go uh, 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 awake today. I, I wake up today, I should say. And I see a bunch of people giving me shit. I see all over, like, random-ass videos about Aiden Ross getting scammed. People being like, no spine. Imagine taking down your video because your friend committed social suicide. Why would he private the last video? Whatever, whatever, whatever. A bunch of people also DMing me. Bro, I got DMs on LinkedIn. I got a death threat there. I was like, bro, I didn't even know I had one still. And I don't, frankly, give a shit. But I did get a little pissed off about it. Because I felt like no one actually gave a shit about what I was saying. I was just being used in a proxy war for people who don't like us on. Why the fuck am I being used for that? It's crazy. It's crazy people. And this is the one that sent me over the edge. Now, this is a DM from a guy that just said no balls because I removed the video. Okay, what the fucking plan to re-upload the video? But he messages me and he says no balls. Now, you know, by itself, you don't think much of it. I mean, like, this is what you do, though. This is, yes, you're going, you used yourself knowingly as part of the proxy war. This is, one, this is part of the thing I said about Vosh. Vosh's ish issue when he separated himself from everybody and he has no friends and nobody willing to defend him is nobody will step out, you know, and put their neck on the line for him. Nobody's going to say like, oh, listen, Vosh didn't mean this or that or that or that or that. But when you lend your credibility to Vosh to help to buoy his reputation, right, after he got caught with lolly horse porn, um, you're going to take a hit too. That's how it works, right? That's how defending people works is hopefully your reputation is good enough that you can take a small hit to salvage them and then you like build each other up and blah, blah, blah. That's how it works. Ludwig did essentially the same when he lied about taking out a video because he said it was for sponsors and then he re-uploaded something that works as like one of the most like asshole polishing videos I've ever seen in my entire fucking life and now he's complaining about being part of a proxy war. Bro, you threw yourself into the proxy war. Yeah. But then I clicked on his Twitter account and I see that he said this, wish assassinations were a real thing. This isn't a quote retweet to, to people in this situation. I'm not trying to say who, I'm not trying to get demonetized here, but what a fucking crazy thing for Mr. Penis Head to say. And then I scrolled up in our DMs and I found out that this dude was my viewer five years ago. Hey man, love your streams. They help me out a lot when I border sad, when I have disposable income one day, I'll give you a few shekels a month. Dude, what the fuck are we doing, man? I, I feel like a crazy person. But when I see all this division, I feel like they're not- This tweet was even before the video, if I recall. Oh, was the tweet date before the video? Not humans, I feel like most- I know that initially he tried to blame this on like being a DG jeer. Like th there was like a Destiny fan threat and he thought that all of it was- I just looked into it and this proves it. The original February 26th Hassan stream where Hassan reacts and complains about Ludwig video. At this point, Ludwig's video is 10 minutes old. This is the original stream that started the drama. I think this is the one we already watched. Real quick. Chris came to TurboTax. Here is Hassan earlier on the same stream looking at his own tweet, which is dated February 26th. So we're not relying on Twitch's timestamps alone for VODs. Ludwig's bookmark of the death threat is dated 1.16 p.m. February 25th, 2024. Twitter timestamp UTC is the 25th and LA time is the 25th, which is always the day before Hassan's 26th stream. So while this technically could be a Destiny fan still, it basically disproves the fact that this tweet had anything to do with Ludwig's Hassan sneak diss video drama. This also proves Ludwig to be an unreliable narrator because he claimed that this tweet was because of the diss in the video and all of the drama about taking down the video, but these are both impossible. He also claimed multiple death threats in an older video, but the only one he has shown has been disproven. If it was actually a Destiny fan, wouldn't they do the death threat after Ludwig was taken down the video with the Hassan diss because they're angry about him playing? Placating himself. Um, and apparently Ludwig re-uploaded the video and then deleted that accusation. Or I don't think you have to re-upload actually on YouTube now. He just deleted that part of the video. Ludwig commented afterwards on LSF. The guy actually messaged me again and said he was a Destiny fan at one point, but no longer is. I've been getting a bunch of messages from Destiny fans and conflated that dude as part of the mob, which was wrong to do. I removed that section and added a correction in the fact sheet. Updates for every Mogul Mail video. Anyway, see this thread is getting bombarded and figured I'd provide context. PP proof. Or PP poof. But what a crazy thing for Mr. Penis Head to say. And then I scrolled up in our DMs and I found out that this dude was my viewer five years ago. Hey man, love your streams. They help me out a lot when I border sad when I have disposable income one day. I'll give you a few shekels a month. 
in a sense moved on i think clearly to like watching destiny and on destiny's behalf wants to like make hassan's life a lot worse and then what a dick suck fucking comment fuck ludwig is like such a decently cool person other than the fact that he's such a spineless fuck and carries so much water i don't know if it's like a cloud obsession thing or if he legitimately just enjoys getting his ass fucking rimmed by hassan every day but like it's especially frustrating because Ludwig knows better. That's I think that's the thing that frustrates me the most about this. Ludwig is a large content creator. I'm pretty sure he's a like larger content creator than me. I'm pretty sure he ha he has a ton of different platforms and like he's got a ton of reach. He knows how irresponsible and stupid it is to take one fucking DM and pretend that it is exemplary or exemplifies an entire fan's fan base or an entire streamer's fan base. Like what a stupid comment to make. You know better than this. You know that you would never stand for anybody doing this. That if I were to go up to you or if anybody else were to make a comment like, oh wow, Ludwig's fans think this because one guy DM me and he follows Ludwig on Twitter, which by the way, I don't think this guy followed me or Hassan or maybe not even Ludwig on Twitter, right? You know how stupid it is to make this type of generalization, but he does it anyway to, to defend his, what, his fucking friend Hassan? How weak, what a spineless thing to do. Or it was just literally Hassan wrote the script for him to do here and he read this alongside the advertiser script. And is trying to like guilt me in a proxy war to achieve that goal. And all I can say, dude, what the f are we doing, man? Like. This is what I experience daily. This is what some of you know. This is what some of you experience daily just for being fucking outward fans. Of and then Hassan vibes off of the very script that he wrote Ludwig to read. Like, this is so fucking pathetic. Like, you look like a six-year-old. Bro, go read this in front of the class and then I'm gonna tell everybody that, like, I totally, I totes agree, bro. Mine, online. You get, everybody has gotten whispers, even in a fucking Twitch chat, from a dude who's been banned in here to be like, hey, would you like to learn about Adolf? <laughs> Like, Hassan, I'm sorry, bro. People hate you all on the run. You're a very easily hateable person. Everybody hates rich, spoiled, over-entitled people. They don't realize how rich and spoiled and entitled they're acting. Like, you're a very easy-to-hate person. And everybody around him should be aware of that by now. It's just wild that he seems to think that I'm the most powerful influencer in the entire fucking world, that every single bit of hate online can be traced back to my community of Adolf Hitler-loving supporters. More investigation, they almost certainly weren't a Destiny viewer. Oh, effort post regarding the Destiny fans sending death threats narrative based on an example from Ludwig's recent video. Context, since Hassan can't keep it together for more than a week and his acquaintances are not going to bat for him hard enough for his hate or for his taste, the DGG boogeyman has been utilized by Ludwig in his recent video. Mirror in case Hassan wants him to delete it again. Oh, I think this is what we just There's watched. crazy people. Yeah. Dude. In his video, Ludwood claims that a person who messaged him after he deleted his recent video is making death threats towards two people in this situation on Twitter. He shows that the same person sent him a positive message five years ago, but has since then allegedly been radicalized by Destiny as making death threats on Destiny's behalf. Don't go scorched earth? This is like the second or third time Ludwig has done this towards me. Like, no, it's pathetic. It's like disgusting. Like, I wouldn't even want this person in my corner, right? Because they're gonna flip on me as soon as there's like another clouded up asshole to lick or something. It's like actually so disgusting, especially when he's another large content creator. He knows better. Like he knows better than this. So the fact that he intentionally sat down, read the script that probably still had Hassan shit smeared on it and decided that that was a good idea without doing any research any evidence nothing on his own is like i think it should hit is a damage to his credibility like he should feel stupid and he should feel bad for doing this not feel bad because i hurt my feelings but feel bad because it makes him out to be like a spineless uneducated hack like you know better than this you know better than this if this was like a 100 view like a 100 follower twitter user okay fine it's still stupid but like i understand you don't know better you don't know anything about this world but ludwig knows better and he still went through with this that's gross the offensive tweet has been seemingly deleted and his video and in his video Ludwig censored the name, profile pic and URL in an attempt to protect the identity of the user. Why? However, you're able to read the beginning of the person's Twitter name in his browser tab at the top reading 30 pin 10 pantoja, I don't know, which was enough to find the potential account. It's the only account that shows up when searching for this part of the name. I understand that this doesn't guarantee this is the correct person, but there is additional information suggesting it likely is. Why am I why when is league content? True. Now remember, the claim is that this person is a radicalized Destiny viewer that fights in the trenches to make Hassan's life miserable. Surprisingly, this person has never tweeted at them or is following either Destiny or Hassan, only Ludwig. The only recent thing regarding Hassan I could find were three liked tweets that were generically shitting on Hassan for his latest take, as well as a handful of older retweets that someone brought up in the comments. See edit two. This person almost exclusively likes and posts about UFC and other fighting related topics. So the name fits, he follows Ludwig, and he knows by the recent Hassan drama, judging by the few tweets he liked in relation to it. It might all be a coincidence, 
evidence, but I'm pretty sure that this is the guy Ludwig brought up in his video, unless he quickly redacted all traces that would link him to Destiny since Ludwig would publish his video. I don't think hi describing him as an obsessed Hassan hater and a Destiny fan is justified. This person just seems like a UFC fan that got really triggered by Hassan's recent take and ended up making an unhinged extreme comment. TLDR, there's no evidence whatsoever that the person Ludwig mentioned was influenced by Destiny or as part of the community. This person does not seem obsessed with making Hassan's like miserable, judging by his recent Twitter activity. Edit, guy on Twitter approved of my findings and provided these two screenshots from an alleged reply to the thread in question, also showing that account name. Again, possibly another coincidence, but maybe not. I don't know enough about, but okay. In the comments, I eat pickles with milk pointed out that there are older retweets where the Twitter user is critical of Hassan. Separate rules don't allow me to link to the comment. That person is possibly a casual Hassan hater, occasionally retweeting Dylan Burns tweets criticizing Hassan, for example. What else? Casey Tron went unhinged for a little bit. Um, and then Zintani checked her and she deleted all of her shit. Oh, yeah. Ludwig has just said, like, just random shit about me. It's just so f***ing annoying. And I think all of it comes from Hassan. While main stage is going on with all these Smash events, a couple of streamers are there by the name of Destiny and Melina. They are at a Smash event doing IRL speed dating. They're not affiliated with the event in any way. I think they just booked a part of the venue. Oh, this was when Melina was doing content with um, the, the one Asian girl, CuteBot. I don't even think I was at this, right? To do speed dating. And the only reason I know this is because they have like two goons roaming around trying to sign smashers up to do speed dating. And then they went up to my friend Bunt and they're like, you wanna do speed dating? He's like, no, I have a girlfriend. And they're like, this is with Destiny the streamer. You could f his girlfriend. He's Jesus like, yeah, Christ. no one cares. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, I was even at this event, yeah. It's so weird, but all right, hey, you know, content's content, you know what I mean? Anything for the sweet, sweet touch of content. I, I mean, you would know that's your entire career, right? Uh, it's not, by the way, this is not like me setting this up. It was uh, the cute bike girl too. I think Melina should be down. I might go later, but I don't know. Or, oh, sorry. If you want to know. Oh yeah, I'm not even at this event at all. I think I picked them up at the end. Why Ludwig doesn't like me? It's because Cutie hates me because her friends hate me. And then it's because Hassan hates me. And Ludwig is like a fucking brown nose or whatever. That's literally the only thing. True. And then there was the. Okay. I don't know how the. F Somehow. I got blamed for doxing Hassan by Ludwig as well. <laughs> Hassan is in his Discord typing out that I doxed him because I put a screenshot of like the third mainstream article that was published about him buying a $3 million WeHo house, okay? I don't know how the fuck that counts as doxing. I don't know why the fuck dipshits like Ludwig would repeat that as doxing. This constant like demonization of me and my like community or whatever, um, of being like these crazy boogeymen, like, <sighs> You guys have fan bases that eclipse mine. Like this guy will go. I'm oh yeah, because this was like f***ing over two years ago, even. So I was still, I was a bit. I didn't even have like my big red pill or blow up or whatever. Like they were still like quite a bit ahead of me. And the idea I'm that cool like that. the the idea that my fan base had so much power on the internet to destroy and propagate and do everything evil that was ever happening to his son was all come from my fan base is like so unhinged. Make the rich pay shirt and then and then the house which which you know it's right not, by the way that is what dog. started it i mean you gotta that is what started it I care somewhat he's acting like the news just landed on his desk but because of destiny's tweet it picked up and uh and for the past like three days 20th 21st 22nd it was uh it was trending and the fucked part is in replies to destiny's tweet people were posting hassan's address uh, and I don't want to get on Destiny's bad side because kind of like Aiden Ross, he has an absolute menace of a viewership. He like, it's so funny because he's like barely able to say this while digging his tongue like out of his son's ass. Like, Destiny fan base, Aiden Ross. Like, bro, what are you even talking about? What the fuck? Like, all of this is just getting shit right down his throat by his son. I don't know if he even has an original thought about me. It's so stupid. That will hunt me down and make me regret ever speaking his name. Um, he's one, he's right about that, too. That's the worst part about it is, like, I can't even do anything about it. God, and I hate how they vibe off of each other. It's so f***ing gross that Hassan spreads this, like, bullshit rumor or this bullshit misinformation to Ludwig. Ludwig says it on stream, and then Hassan, like, vibes with it on Instagram. Like, oh, yeah, he's, t he's like, yo, Ludwig, like, careful. Destiny's viewers are, like, all f***ing Nazis. And, like, you know... Two days later, Ludwig on stream. I really think Destiny's beers are all Nazis. And then I started watching like, yeah, bro, I totally agree with Ludwig. Yeah, they are all Nazis. Like, bro, come on. Because they'll just keep doing this. And it's not that his viewership is gigantic. They're just the most dedicated mother 
streamers on the planet. This is the secret thing that streamers like literally all know and recognize is that I'm sorry, guys. I know some of you guys like probably watch him too, but his community is incredibly loyal and they operate in the exact same way that old like 4chan circles used to operate in like Kiwi Farms and 4chan. They do. It's the exact same way. Maybe they don't go to the same extent. Like maybe they don't, uh, I don't know, swap. And it's so funny that like that's my fan base. Meanwhile, Hassan's fan base over the Ethan shit. I'm sorry, but like he can never live this down after how unhinged his fan base was. Also, the fact that, by the way, the, the rich pay shirt and then and then the house, which which you know. my tweet got seven thousand four hundred likes. Okay, which is like decent for a tweet, but mega viral across the entire internet for seven thousand four hundred likes. Seriously?